Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking about weighted averages and mixture problems. So today is all about how we take two different items, mix them together to create the perfect mixture based on percentages or ounces or grams and things like that. These problems can be pretty tedious to set up, but once we set them up, we get an equation that is super easy to solve. So follow along with me and make sure you are paying close, close attention. So our first problem, mixture problem, we're going to see is about cookies. So it says Delectable Cookie Company sells chocolate chip cookies for $6.95 per pound and sugar cookies for $5.95 per pound. How many pounds of chocolate chip cookies should be mixed with four pounds of sugar cookies to obtain a mixture that sells for $6.75 per pound? So here we have an expensive cookie at $6.95 per pound and sugar cookies at $5.95 per pound. And we want four pounds of those sugar cookies to get mixed with some amount of chocolate chip cookies so that the mixture combined averages at $6.75 per pound. That's what we're trying to look at. So what we will find is that it's really easy to set up um, weighted average problems in a table form. So we first have to define the variable. So we're trying to figure out how many pounds of chocolate chip cookies. We're going to let's just, just say call that W to represent the weight. So we have chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies, and a mixture. Those are going to be our three categories. The other three categories that we're going to break them up into are how many pounds, what's the price per pound, and then what actually is the total price. So what we're trying to calculate is how many pounds of chocolate chip cookies we need. So that's where W is going to go. We know the price per pound for chocolate chip cookies, it's $6.95. We are given that we wanna use four pounds of sugar cookies. So four would go here. The price per pound for sugar cookies was $5.95 per pound. We're hoping to then make a mixture. So we're combining chocolate chip cookies and sugar cookies together. So the algebraic way we represent the mixture is going to be the, the pound of chocolate chip cookies, W, plus the amount of pounds of sugar cookies, which is four. So that expression, W plus four, means how many pounds of chocolate chip cookies plus how many pounds of sugar cookies together. And we are also told that the price should average 675. So once you get the, this part of your table set up, what we do to calculate the total price is think about it. It's how many pounds you're purchasing multiplied by the price per pound. So the total price of chocolate chip cookies will be W times 695. And I can call it W times 695 or 695 W. See what we're doing, and I'm just going to put across here, is you are multiplying across to get your total column. So now if I use that same philosophy for the rest, which is what I'm going to do, 4 times 595 looks like this, 595 times 4. And then this entire expression times 675, you'll see you're going to need to put parentheses around that expression. When you don't have just one term, but you have more than one term, you need to make sure the entire value is being multiplied. Now, the equation that we actually set up is here. It's the chocolate chip cookies plus the price for the sugar cookies set equal to what we hope the mixture should be. And that is actually our equation. So it's 695 W plus 595 times four should be equal to what we want the mixture to be, 675 times that W plus four. And I'm not gonna bother having us solve the equation right now, but let's say we were to solve this equation, we end up getting W equals 16, which would then mean, hey, we need 16 pounds of chocolate chip cookies to mix with the four pounds of sugar cookies to make it average out to that price of 675 per pound. So we're gonna take a look at a few problems here and I'm going to uh, fix up my screen real quick where we're gonna go through the same kind of idea. We are going to set up our equations. Um, we're gonna fill in this chart first. So here our first problem says, the grocery store has two kinds of candy. Sugar candy sells for $1.55 per pound, and sugar-free candy sells for $2.95 per pound. 
how many pounds of sugar-free candy, so the more expensive candy, must be added to 15 pounds of sugar candy to make a mixture that sells for $1.75 per pound. Okay, so we have a cheap candy, the sugar candy, at $1.55. We have the more expensive candy at $2.95, and we want to have 15 pounds of that sugar candy add up with some amount of sugar-free so that the average pricing is $1.75 per pound. So we have sugar, sugar-free, and now a mixture of the candies. We have pounds, price, and total, just like we had for the cookies. So sugar and pounds, we are told we're working with 15 pounds of sugar candy. And the sugar candy has a price of $1.55 per pound. Sugar-free, we're trying to solve for that number of pounds. So that's where we're going to put our variable. And again, you can use any variable. I'm just using W to represent the wheat. We know the price of sugar-free candy. It's $2.95. Then the mixture. We want the mixture to be sugar plus the sugar-free. So I'm going to add these two together. And you can represent it as 15 plus W or W plus 15 because we're combining the two together. We want that average price to be $1.75. So now remember what we did with the cookie problem. We multiply across the pounds times the price to fill in our total column. So I would have here 15 times $1.55. And then W times 295 or 295 W. And then $1.75 times the entire quantity of 15 plus W. And again, that's where you're going to need your parentheses. So now here is where our equation comes from. It's the sugar free plus, the, I'm sorry, the sugar candy plus the sugar free set equal to what the mixture is supposed to be. So 15 times $1.55 plus 2.95 times W should be equal to $1.75 times 15 plus W. And honestly, once you get to this point, it is just solving an equation. So if I was going through and solving this equation, 15 times $1.55, and then I'm distributing my $1.75 to the 15 and W, my equation would look like this. We now have an equation where we have constants and variables on both sides. So technically, I could get rid of any term so far. And then we would get 295W equals $3 plus $1.75W. Subtract my $1.75W on both sides. Do just our regular solving equation steps, guys, until we get 2.5 as an answer. So W equals 2.5 means we would need 2.5 pounds of sugar-free candy to mix with that 15 pounds of sugar candy to get the mixture price that we would have wanted, okay? So setting up the table is the biggest part. And then once we have that table set up and we know how to write the equation from that last column, the solving the equation part is simple, um, but it's about setting up the equation that takes the most time. Let's take a look at problem number two. So problem number two says you want to make a Halloween party mix of popcorn and pretzels to sell for a fundraiser. Popcorn costs $1.10 per pound and pretzels cost $1.49 per pound. How many pounds of popcorn must be added to four pounds of pretzels to make a mixture that sells for $1.25 per pound? So it says how many pounds of popcorn? So that's what we know where the variable is going to go. X is going to represent the number of pounds of popcorn. Notice the format of my table is pretty similar. It's popcorn, pretzels, mixture. Pounds, price, total. Popcorn for pounds, that's what we're looking to solve for. The price per uh, popcorn is $1.10, and we know how to get our total column right. We are multiplying straight across. Pretzels, we are told that we are using four pounds of pretzels. Pretzels are $1.49 per pound, and we multiply that across to get our last column. And now the mixture. Popcorn plus, plus pretzels will give us X plus four. The mixture price, we want it to be $1.25. And we know at this point, we multiply straight across. So $1.25 times that X plus four. Okay, so now we're setting up our equation. So it's $1.10X, so the first value for popcorn, plus the value of pretzels, four times $1.49, should be equal to $1.25 times X plus four. And then once you have this equation set up, it should be pretty much smooth sailing. You are distributing and multiplying. You are then solving your equation as you normally would have. Um, 
until we end up getting to our final answer, which ends up being 6.4, which would mean that we need 6.4 pounds of popcorn to be added to the amount of pretzels to make that mixture value. Okay, problem number three. So a nursery sells Kentucky bluegrass seed for $5.75 per pound and tall fescue seed for $4.50 per pound. The nursery sells a mixture of the two kinds of seed for $5.25 per pound. Let K represent the amount of Kentucky bluegrass seed the nursery uses in five pounds of the mixture. So we're gonna let K represent the number of pounds of Kentucky bluegrass seed. I'm gonna abbreviate it as KGB, uh, KBG. And then tall fescue is going to be a TF. So we have to figure out how much of this grass seed, which sells for $5.75 per pound, we need. But notice it actually doesn't tell us how much tall fescue. It says in five pounds of the mixture. So five actually doesn't go for tall fescue. It goes here. And we want the mixture to be an average of $5.25 per pound. So this problem is set up actually a little bit differently. Instead of knowing how much of each individual and adding up to the mixture, we're given one of the pieces, we're given the mixture amount, which is the total amount, but now we actually have to work backwards to figure out how to represent tall fescue. If five pounds is the entire amount of seed and K represents part of it, then think about the algebraic expression we would use to set up for what's left over. If five is the total amount and K is part of it, then the remaining part would be five minus K. And that's how we represent how much tall fescue seed there's going to be. The price is uh, 450 per pound and we know we need to then multiply straight across. So now we're able to write our equation. So 590, uh, 575 K plus 450 times five minus K equals 525 times five. Now, when you go to solve this type of equation, you are distributing and you're multiplying. But what you'll notice in this type of equation is that you actually have your variables on both sides. So this 575K and this negative 450K, we have to make sure we are combining those like terms. So it becomes $1.25K plus 2250 uh, equals 2625. And then we can solve as normal. Okay, all the rest of the steps are pretty good to go, and we end up getting K equals 3, which means we need 3 pounds of Kentucky bluegrass. So I just want to kind of um, go back and make sure we understand exactly what's happening here. We're asked to find the amount of Kentucky bluegrass seed. We're told to find the total mixture. So when you are left over finding part of the puzzle, that's when the subtraction um, expression will come into play. Okay. Problem number four, Olivia is trying to make her favorite lemonade. Lemonade she buys at the store contains 20% lemon juice. Olivia wants to add pure lemon juice to the 20% blend to make 16 ounces of her own blend that contains 30% lemon juice. Let J represent the amount of lemon juice Olivia should add to the 20%. Okay, so here's what's happening. Olivia buys this lemonade and lemonade on the bottle, it says it contains 20% lemon juice. She wants to use that lemonade and make 16 ounces of her own mixture, but she wants it to be more sour. She wants the final result to actually be 30% lemon juice. So what's happening is she's taking the original 20% lemonade. She's going to be adding pure lemon juice so that the result of the mixture she likes is actually 30% lemon juice. Okay, so it says... We need to um, let J represent the amount of lemon juice she needs to add in. And look, 16 ounces of her own blend of the 30%. So 16 actually goes down here. So we have to do the same thing we did in the previous problem. If we want 16 to be the total and J represents the lemon juice ounces, then the 20% would be 16 minus J. Okay, the entire amount minus whatever the lemon juice is. Now, instead of talking about price, instead of talking about pounds, we're doing ounces. Instead of talking about price, we're actually talking about what percent of lemon juice. Notice there's no prices here. So instead of this kind of decimal amount for price, we're doing percents of lemon juice. So the original lemon ju lemonade is 20% lemon juice. 
And then of course we multiply across like normal. What percent of lemon juice is lemon juice? It's 100%. So we're taking a 20% mixture. We're adding 100% lemon juice so that the result will be a 30% lemon juice blend. We multiply straight across like we did previously before. So 20% times the 16 minus J, 100%, or which is really 1.00 times J, and then 30% of that 16. We end up setting up our equation the exact same way. So the 20% lemonade plus the lemon juice is equal to the 30%. We're then using our just solving equation skills to distribute out. Again, we have that situation where we have our variables on the same side of the equation. So negative uh, 0.20j plus j gives us 0.8j. And then we are just solving through and we end up getting two. And so we would need two ounces of that pure lemon juice added to our 20% blend to make the 30% lemonade blend. Okay, last two problems here. Nathan is trying to make a very sweet iced coffee drink for his dad. This is disgustingly sweet, you guys. How many grams of sugar must be added to 50 grams of iced coffee that is 30% sugar? That's already beyond disgusting. To obtain a mixture solution that is 70% sugar. Now, this is not a real life situation at all. This is like impossible, um, but we're just going to go with it. So G is gonna represent the number of grams of sugar. So a 30% sugar iced coffee. So this is the original mix. We're adding in pure sugar so that the final mixture is 70% sugar in that iced coffee. So how many grams of sugar must be added to 50 grams of iced coffee? So we're starting off with 50 grams of iced coffee. That is 30% sugar. And again, you get that total column by multiplying. We want to figure out how many grams of sugar G, what percent of sugar is sugar? It's 100%, just like the lemon juice problem. We multiply across so that our result is a 70% sugar mix iced coffee. So the original iced coffee plus the sugar would be 50 plus G. We want it to be 70% sugar. And then you know the deal at this point. We are multiplying across to get that value. So now our equation. The 30% iced coffee mix of so 50 times 0.30 plus 1G should be equal to 0.70 times 50 plus G. And then you know the deal. This just becomes a basic equation for you to solve through. I'm not going to bore you with all the steps. And we end up getting 66.7 grams of sugar. That's disgusting. It's not real. Last one, how many grams of sugar must be added to 60 grams of a solution that is 32% sugar to obtain a solution that is 50% sugar? Guys, this is basically the same type of problem of the problem we just looked at. Um, so we're talking about a 32% mix. We're going to add sugar so that our final mix is 50% sugar. So how many grams of sugar must be added to 60 grams of a solution that is 32%? So the 32% mix we're starting with is 60 grams. It is 32% sugar. We multiply across. We want to know how many grams G of sugar, 100% sugar, should be added so that our result, this mixture of 60 plus G, ends up being 50% sugar. We then set up our equation, 60 times 0.32 plus 1G equals that 50% times 60 plus G. Then it's just multiplying and distributing and solving a basic equation. And again, I'm not gonna bore you with all of those steps, but we end up getting 21.6 grams of sugar. I know this was a lot of information. I hope it was helpful for you and you were able to follow along. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.